this water taste weird to you? Really good. Does it taste weird to you? Weird? Hey guys, how's it going? So we're back at the pawn shop for another interview. Uh, today we have Hero Bus. He just landed. He's gonna be here any minute now. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's head inside. Cool. Are we speed? Speed. Do you, you know movie terminology really well. No, I only the know background the union or like the roll roll sound roll speed. I only know speed. That's the speed. only one I have. Have you wanted to like be in movies and stuff? In what? It, have, like be star in movies? No, no, I don't think I'll be very good at that. No, <laughs> I don't think so, man. Acting is really hard. Like yeah. looking like you're, you know, looking natural and like believable. That's really hard. Yeah. I don't think I can do that. But you kind of do it like on stage all the time, don't you? Yeah, but that's that's different, man. You know, because music for everybody like taps into something, you know, kind of like primitive. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. it's like you're you're not in character, but you're definitely a different version of yourself. Yeah. You know, maybe that's what method acting is. Yeah. I don't know. Do you enjoy like performing, or is it yeah, more like the producing side of it? I, I'm I'm primarily a producer for yeah. sure. Like yeah. that's my favorite thing to do in the world. Mm -hmm. it's amazing. Um, but I mean, DJing is awesome. Yeah, too. I read like a little bit about you, and like you came from a family of like highly educated people, and you also went to university and graduated. How was like that whole part? Were you doing music while going through uni and stuff? I did. I did music um, like through high school. Um, does this water taste weird to you? Really good. Does it taste weird to you? Weird. <laughs> I think it's just tap water. Yeah. We can get. Did you order beer? I did. I, or no, actually I did. Okay, nice. Thank you, man. Um, this is not BC water. <laughs> what are they? <laughs> what are they feeding us? No, but I did. I did music through high school, and um, and I ended up producing um, for a lot of people back then because Atlanta is like a major hub for hip hop and rap music. So I was producing just rap, rap like all the kids in my high school. Oh really? Yes, yeah, producing for like a lot of like local rappers, and um, then I went to college and kind of like, you know, my, my family had like really like conditioned me to like, all right, like go to college, do your thing, go be a doctor and all that. And yeah. So I really I stopped making music pretty much the whole time I was there. Oh wow. And um, but the whole time I kind of knew like that's really what I wanted to do. So. When I graduated, I basically told myself, like, I'm going to take a year off and try music out. And if I make a certain amount of progress, then I'll stick with it. If not, like, I, was, I had already taken my MCAT and, like, was already, like, choosing, like, what school, what med school I was going to go to. So yeah. uh, I was like, yeah, I'll just reapply next year. Won't be a problem. Uh, but it worked, so yeah. that's... Yeah, and lucky. so you had like you, you were producing and then you stopped for four years like completely or did you keep it yeah, up a little man, bit? I totally stopped. Oh it man. Sucked. And then in that one year you had to like relearn everything, I guess? In uh, a way? I definitely had I definitely had a lot to learn in terms of like, you know, like new programs and new technology. Because yeah. like it really moves quickly. In four years, yeah. yeah. It, ch it changes all the time now. <laughs> yeah. Every few months. Yeah, so I, I did have a decent amount to learn, but I was really motivated, you know, I told myself I have a year, you know, so I was like, and I yeah. needed this to work. Yeah. Because the alternative was, you know, med school. That's crazy. So, yeah, but, uh, Do you think that's like what, like, pushed you to get to that, like, success? Like, what if you had, like, pursued music all through four years and stuff and, like, had no rush, man. really? Well, I, I think, I think I would have been a lot better off if I had done music throughout school instead yeah. because back then like it was easier to get I'm not gonna say it's easier to get noticed back then but it was certainly less saturated you know and had I had I started my career like professionally back then it just would have been a huge head start yeah you know? yeah and what was your major because I couldn't find that uh, I majored in biochemistry biochemistry oh my god yeah. you have to be really smart for that stuff that's awesome you just have to work. You have to work hard, though. Yeah. You know. 
I wouldn't say anything requires you to be smarter than anybody else, but Thank you. you definitely have to work hard. Yeah. I did that. But it actually was like, um, it wasn't a total waste of time. It actually, it was a pretty like validating experience, you know? Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a hard major and there were a lot of people competing for the spots that I was competing for. Yeah. And to, to be successful, even though it was in a different arena and like out-compete all those people, it really gave me confidence that like, I can, I, I can do something, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, whether it's music or going back to another, you know, school, it's like, I, I felt better about deciding to do music because if I ever had to go back to something else, I had the confidence that I just outcompeted like a lot of people and like worked hard and everything, mm -hmm. and uh, I was in good standing. So yeah. it gave me, it gave me the confidence really to take that year off. Actually, that's crazy. That's awesome. And it like, was crazy. have you had to like fall? back on the biochemistry at all? Or has it, has I haven't been... used it at all. Oh my god. I mean, sometimes, like, I mean, I'll know random things, you know? Like, like I might be at, like, a, you know, a festival or something, and, like, you know, like, somebody <laughs> just spouts some, like, bullshit nutrition fact. Like, oh. some, like, whoop thing about sage or something. Yeah, yeah. And I'll, I'll, like, actually know. Uh, like you know, like what <laughs> that they're wrong. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's yeah. you know, it's nothing I can't use. It's just yeah. like funny, like, oh I actually know something about that. It's like conversational stuff. Boring conversation, albeit. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, not useful at all. Your new track, uh, WTF, just came out. Yeah. It's like getting really, really big. Like yeah, it's, it's getting really it's popular. Doing really great. I'm so happy that, that how, people like it, yeah. How did that track like like start like um, it was kind of like a a challenge really um, I knew that I wanted to I wanted to stretch like the limits of like um, like vocal processing so I so the, the goal was make an entire song out of one vocal sample and just and like process it in a bunch of different ways. Try to make drums out of it, make your riser out of it, make your bass sounds out of it, make as many elements as you can out of that. Um, and it was it was kind of just like an exercise I wanted to put myself through. Because a lot of times if you, if you put limitations on yourself creatively, you you can come up with a lot of stuff you never would have otherwise. So yeah. um, so that was the idea and. Um, and I just thought, you know, like when I was like, what am I, what's the vocal that I'm going to use? What the fuck? Like, I don't know. It just, it just fits. And yeah. it's like, this song is going to be weird. This yeah. song is going to be weird. Because yeah, I'm going to yeah. be like twisting and manipulating the sample. And so I, yeah, I knew it was going to be strange. So I was like, yeah, sure. And, um, and I think also like seeing art, like artists like, uh, like Rez, you know, like really push the whole like, like confused and like hypnotic kind of like you know atmospheric like breakdowns like those kind of sounds yeah. I was like yeah like that would make sense you know like what the fuck like it's just utter like bewildering you know really? so that was kind of like the that's kind of the vibe and um, so yeah so I like I made almost everything out of just processing that phrase in a bunch of different ways um, yeah, the song turned out pretty cool. That's I awesome. And now the entire tour is like based off of that song, like the whole thing. And you have like, I didn't count how many, but it was quite a bit. It was until like November, right? Yeah, I mean, it go, it'll go all the way through. That's just phase next one. Year. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a whole other half. And That's then cool. we're going to drop an EP. And then, so there'll be another tour after that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Dope. Oh my god. How? But this isn't your first tour, right? You've done no. like other tours. Mm -hmm. How was tour life for you? It's awesome. Yeah. I mean, there there are a lot of different ways to tour, right? Yeah. You can tour like right now we're we're doing flyout dates and stuff because most of this tour is actually in uh, in Europe and Australia. Yeah. Um, but we, like I've done the bus tour thing, like that's a totally different type yeah. of touring, a totally different way. The bus tour is honestly the most fun. Mm -hmm. um, it feels a lot like camp, 
actually. Mm -hmm. And like the bus is your cabin, and you are undoubtedly the coolest cabin at camp. And so it's like, it's like you and like, the, there's like 12 bunks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, awesome. A lot of people don't realize how many bunks there are in those buses. There's 12. So between you, maybe two other acts, a tour manager, and like all the lighting people and the people that build like the, the stage and stuff yeah. every night, like yeah. you can fill all 12 of those. So you're traveling around 12 usually guys, you know. Yeah, of course. So it's like a, it's a Bonnie experience for sure. It's like your cabin, you know. What are some like some of your like craziest stories from that, <laughs> or like I one mean, that stands out? Because it seems like twelve guys all traveling together. There's yeah. bound to be some like yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, so, I'm not. I'm not gonna like. You know, I'm not trying to get into anything that could get anybody in trouble or anything. Oh wow! But I'll say my best story that I have involves a city, a city in the Midwest. An entire crowd on uh, bath salts. Oh my god! Um, and and a man <laughs> with a prosthetic leg, and in a bar fight. Oh my god! And that's like if you if you catch if you catch up with me like if you catch up with me off camera. I'll, this is the best story I have. Like when people ask me like a story, this go this is the go to every time. Dan knows this, the story is ridiculous. Um, but I can't, you know. Not yeah, yeah, I'll hear it after. <laughs> uh, but yeah, what about like, because there's so many shows and you're basically playing like every day or every other day. How is it like on like your physical or like mental, like, I guess like, um, is it's, it taxing it's, it's, or is it's it? It's, it's definitely taxing I and mean, then traveling every day yeah. is uh, taxing. There's, you don't get a lot of sleep. Yeah. Um, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, but it's it's something it's you get used to. Yeah. You know, it's like after doing it for a while you feel like like you hear about like a Navy SEAL that's like okay to sleep an hour a day and eat like half yeah. a meal a day. Yeah. You know, like I kinda feel like I'm like that. Really? Yeah, except I can drink way more, probably. I'm all, You're kind of like a the veteran. conditioning extends to partying a little a bit. A seasoned veteran. Also. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so, yeah, it's like, it is a lot, but it's definitely something you get used to. I think I think everybody starts off being, like, really excited, and they dive in headfirst and, like, start partying, like, every single night. And you can do that. You can do that for about a month and a half. But like you really, everyone goes through that where you just kind of fall apart and realize like, whoa, I gotta start like picking my battles. You know, like some nights, some nights I'm gonna go in, some nights, you know, I'm gonna, yeah. you know, take it easy a little bit. Yeah. This is like awesome. Which ones are the, the gluten-free ones? Do they make those? The gluten-free ones. Jamie, can you ask? Which ones are like the gluten-free ones? The gluten-free no. ones. Or did we order more? What did you order? Uh, there's, there's two tunas. That's the tunas. That's for, uh, yeah, these are, sorry, it's for Dan? Did she? Wait, can you go ask her? Yeah, yeah, gluten-free ones. Okay, which ones? Excuse me. Do you know which ones are the gluten-free ones? Um, yeah, the Hongo is gluten-free, and then that's it. That's it? Yeah. Okay, can we get some more? Yeah, do you want, like, gluten-free ones? Yeah, 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 ones? yeah. We can, like, do any of them with a corn taco if you have a preference, or did you want them Which, Which ones? Like, the corn, is it just the corn, like, taco? Or the tortilla? You can have essentially any taco you want. Yeah, the tuna. Should have told us. What do you usually eat on tour? Is it just, like, anything and everything? Whatever I can. Whatever you can. I mean, sometimes you have time, you know? Sometimes you land, like today I landed, it was like five. 
check into the hotel, you know, between, you know, like we have like sound check and stuff like that, but we have a decent amount of time, you know, get a reasonable meal. Um, but sometimes, sometimes you land and like you go straight to the venue from the airport, mm. you know, and then you go right back, you know, to the airport. Like yeah. sometimes it's like that. Like so, you're not always in full control over what you get to eat. Mm. I'd say half my half your meals on the road are after the show. It's like after three in the morning. So the only thing left at that point is pretty much pizza. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. So I, I eat healthy when it's like within my power to do so, but a lot of times it's just not. But I actually, yeah, I don't care. It's like every night I'm doing an, at least an hour to 90 minutes of cardio. It's like I'm teaching a Zumba class every night. <laughs> yeah? So Is that how you see it? I mean, I'm well, well, and the I sweat is, my ass off every night, man. Yeah. So, kind of. I mean, I don't really have to worry about, actually, I don't have to worry about gaining weight on the road. Uh, I actually lose weight on the road, because when I'm at home, like working on albums and stuff, I'll like work out, and I'll, then I'll gain weight at home, but I lose it, because I'm not, I'm not able to eat enough and work out enough on the road. That's, that's crazy, yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's the opposite problem I think most DJs have. Hmm. But. What about some artists that you've like seen who are like the like hardest partiers usually? Um, uh, snails, snails, Fred. I've met him. Yeah, Fred can. I'm just talking about drinking right now. Snails, <laughs> snails is a, is a big man. It's a yeah. large person. Yeah. Um, He's a really nice guy as well. Oh yeah, yeah. great guy. Yeah. He can drink a lot, and he will, you know, he does his thing. <laughs> um, 12th Planet is unbelievable as well. He, uh, yeah, he can just go, man. And he's been doing it for years. I like A seasoned veteran. Yeah, seriously, man. And the crazy thing is he'll remember everything. I remember everything about the next morning. No, 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 no. Four years later. Oh, what? He'll, he'll see you. Go, oh, you came to that show in Vancouver. You were wearing the the little uh, the civil uh, shirt. Yeah, we talked about uh, e currency and shit. And you're like, oh, how man. do you remember that? <laughs> and he was like wasted, you know. Not that nobody has any problems or anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he he is a genius. He real. If he wasn't if he wasn't DJing, man. He could have been like curing cancer or something. 12 Planet is smart as shit. Wow. Yeah. Unexpected from some of these artists. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of who else. Um, I mean, they all can. You know, really, mm -hmm. like, the lifestyle just kind of conditions you to, you know. Yeah. Party hard. Is there anyone that, like, doesn't party at all, like health, just, I think, uh, I know a few that are like complete health nuts that just like don't drink, don't do anything, Yeah. meditate and stuff, I think headhunters, if you know headhunters. You know, it, yeah, yeah, it's, I mean it's all relative though, like, yeah. if you asked like 12th Planet that question, he would be like, oh, Hero Bus like never parties, he's always working out, you know, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Um, so it, yeah, it's it's all relative. As somebody like uh, Kaiwachi, he's a good example. Like him and like Black Tiger Sex Machine, those Ooh, guys are those like guys. they're yeah. really into um, you know like fitness and stuff. Oh, wow. And so like I know they they usually travel, I think on a sprinter when they tour to make sure that they always have time to like find a gym and like work out and like you know eat well and stuff on the road. So like they you know they're like who you're talking about like they're really serious about it and like for that reason I don't think they're like you know crazy party animals or anything. That's interesting. Where would you say is like your favorite place to perform? Because and also I wanted to ask you like what are your opinions on EDM in like China and like Asia just in general? Because it seems like 
in Europe, it's like it's been there for so long, but in Asia, it's like blowing up. Some of them, like I know websites like SoundCloud are still blocked and stuff by everything, the government. No, everything's blocked in China. Or everything, yeah, everything. But like, what do you think is like the future for for there? Um, I've heard some like crazy rules where like you can't stick the middle finger up, you can't swear when you're performing and stuff, or else you get like arrested. So. Um, the the Asian market for bass music especially is exploding. Yeah. Mind you, like in India, you know, like in Asia, like they have yeah. huge. They've always had huge, huge festivals, but it's usually like your DJ Mag Top 100, okay. you know, like whatever. Um, and and those are you know great, awesome festivals that put them in there massive. Yeah. So it's not like EDM is new to them. Yeah. Uh, it, but it's it's bass music that's new to them. Yeah. Um, and from what I understand, the internet in China, for example, is it is not the internet that we have, right? They have like, imagine like your fa your Facebook app and your online banking, and like all your apps were, were one app, and that was your internet. That's what like WeChat is in China. It's like you do your online banking. <coughs> So sending anybody money, or if you want to tweet or get your news or any of these things, it's all through one app. That's crazy. And which makes it easy for the government to kind of, you know, regulate what's, cool, yeah. what people are seeing. Um, so they they see Western culture. Um, they don't have just open access to it, right? Yep. So in in some markets. Um, in some markets, like uh, that, do have open access. Um, they might, you might see the same exact trends that happen in America or somewhere, but it's just like, oh, it happens six months later or a year later. Huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. But in China, there is no linear progression like that because they don't have open access, so you don't know what they're gonna grab onto. You know, you like. When I play in China, if, yeah. if I play like a pop reference, like a song that yeah. I expect everyone to sing to, yeah. I'm rolling the dice, man, because they probably don't know it. Oh my god. But what they do know is some random sing-along from like the 80s. And I'm like, what? You know, because so what I'm trying to say is like, it's totally, it's totally random what makes it through that keyhole that they see Western culture through. You know what I mean? That's crazy. So yeah, so there's no way to predict really what's what's happening. And maybe maybe things are maybe access is just opening up for them as a whole. Yeah. And it will start to kind of you know fuse with the linear um, you know cultural like time that like we have. But um, but but so far it's like. Yeah, the, the limitation really makes it like a very unpredictable market. Yeah. You know? It's really interesting, like getting to play there, yeah. getting to play maybe like, you know, 12 shows in two weeks or something, and the first show you play, you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa I don't even know how to play for this crowd. Yeah. It's like learning how to DJ all over again, and you have to kind of figure them out. And like, it, it's, it was really fun. It was like, yeah. it was like learning, a, you know, Unlike anything I'd ever experienced. I loved it, man. That's interesting, yeah. Oh my god. Super fun. I mean, a typical typical show for me in America, I walk into the club, I, I, even before that, I, I already know what they want to hear. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. In, huh. in China, you know, you gotta learn as you go. You know what I mean? It's crazy. So it's so as a DJ, it's like it's really um, it's really fun because it's like reading it's like reading an audience just on a whole other level. Like, do they know hip hop? Okay, they know hip hop, but do they know hip hop now, or do they know it from the 2000s or the 90s? Yeah. Like you're trying like the whole time you're like yeah. trying to figure out culturally like where are they in like a, a chronologically? It's crazy. And there are these little pockets where, like, oh, they love like old Michael McDonald's, and you're like, what? How is that supposed to be? I don't even know that? that. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's really it's really interesting. But bass music is getting huge there, and uh, and now like 
Like I, I have videos on my phone of like people dropping the WTF song that yeah. we just released, yeah, yeah, yeah. and everybody already knows the words, and they're like yelling like, "What the Sweet. fuck?" Yeah. So like awesome. the fact the fact that I've gone there and and really played there a lot and been outspoken about how much I enjoy playing there, I think you know we have like a solid fan base there now where they're looking for you know for our content. Sure. Yeah. I need some more napkins. <laughs> Sean, do you know where I can get some more napkins? Where's Jamie? <laughs> oh my god. No, it's just falling apart. I don't know how to eat tacos. <laughs> What's been like, what's your favorite country to play in? I don't know, I, I, I'm not really big on favorites, man. Like, they're all, they're all different and they're all awesome and beautiful for like different reasons, you know? I mean, I'm about to go back to Australia. It's always awesome playing there. Like those people are just—they're so fun. Um, playing in China is incredible. It's like it's just a totally different mentality out there. Um, playing in India was really amazing, also. Um, but they're all—they're all extremely different. They're all very, very different. And um, it's really interesting to see. How how different people party, you know? Because you're not you're not just traveling. Like you're also for for one night, you are the ambassador of a party for a group of locals. So you get to literally see like how they party, how they respond to things, and you get a really interesting insight into the people of you know that crowd or the people of that country. Um, yeah, it's, it's just a really interesting way to take in cultural differences. Interesting. It's <laughs> cool. Um, just a few more. I'll ask like about uh, tips to like younger producers and stuff like that. Because um, right now it's like really. Uh, I don't know, would you call it saturated? Like, just the dance music scene in general? Hmm? Would you call it, like, saturated? Or oversaturated? Or is there still, like, room for people to there's make it? There's tons of room. There's, there's never been an easier time to make it than right now. I mean, think about, like, what, what who, do, who do you like right now? Uh, recently, Oh, there's been so uh, it's like more of the future house scene, if you know that that genre. It's like Don Diablo. Okay. That kind of style. That's what I've been recently listening to. Uh, I saw Lenium a couple weeks ago. But yeah. Lenium's awesome. Yeah. Oh, it's all over the place. For me, it's like tech house, bass house, For sure. dubstep, everything. Okay, so I guess I guess what I'm going what I'm going for is like. You see an artist like, um, like how long was Rez grinding, you know, on the Rez project before it just absolutely exploded? Huh. I have no I don't idea. Know. I'm not trying to shortchange her come up at all, but I am saying the fact that she grew so fast, um, that's a testament to how much potential there is in the market right now. Um, I'll go even like in like a earlier stage of a career. Somebody like Heckler or Mastodon, those are guys in bass music right now, yeah. who are each separately putting out songs that are getting rinsed by all the big artists, and it's blowing them up so fast. Like they went from not playing any shows at all to now I'm seeing them like you know on like daytime slots, but of huge festivals, yeah. and it happened overnight because their music was that good. So, and, but it happened overnight, man. I'm talking about 
for a dubstep person, yeah. Lost Lands is like probably the number one show you want to play in in the world, probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm talking about like Heckler or Mastodon putting out like one song that just everybody rinses until somebody says we got to put them on this festival and does it. So it's it didn't it didn't happen that fast when yeah. I started not too long ago, mm-hmm. and it's it's it seems like it's only getting faster. You know, people want people want to blow up that new hot thing. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So. So to look at it and say, oh, it's saturated. There's, there's, you can't make it anymore. I just think that's crazy because it's like it, you, this is this used to take forever to, yeah. to, to, to like grind your way to that point, and now you can just do it overnight. And the only thing you got to do is have awesome music. That's a fair deal. That sounds awesome. Yeah. How long have you been producer? Or like, how would you say? your rise happened? Was there like a defining like one point or one song that you released that like took you to like 10 steps ahead instead of just like continually um, growing? I would say the the thing that really popped me off was an EP that I released on Mad Decent. Yeah, Mad Decent. Um, it's yeah. called I'm Loud. And that EP, that was around the time where like I think people were kind of getting bored of like traditional like trap yeah. and they were kind of looking for like a just something different and so I was one of the I don't want to say I'm not gonna self-proclaim myself the first but I was one of the artists that was early in like getting really known for like the whole hybrid trap sound like using a lot of like abrasive dubstep tones with like the trap yeah. you know energy and at the time it was like it was no, a lot, not a lot of people were doing it. It was really new, and a lot of people discovered that because of that one EP that I put out. And I still think most of the fans that I have today found out about me from that EP. Um, that's probably the biggest, you know, the biggest jump for me. But you know, I started like a while ago, so it for artists of my like, uh, you know, generation like. Things happened slower back then, I think. Or it was it was more typical for that to be the case. Um, yeah. Yeah. It seems like our hip hop. You're talking about hip hop music, but I'm pretty sure that doesn't include like the mumble rappers of SoundCloud right now. I think you're more like a traditional guy, I guess, when it comes to hip hop rap music. I like it all, man. Everything, really. So like the the Lil like, Zan, the Lil Pump. Well, I mean, I'm not into Lil Zan, but that's not because he's too dumb. I like shit way dumber than Lil Zan. Um, I like, I listen to Playboy Cardi all day today. Oh yeah. Do uh, you know who Playboy Cardi is? Playboy Cardi is like the dumbest shit. Yeah. You know, on the internet. Yeah. But it's just it's just a vibe. Yeah. And. To me, I know a lot of people. A lot of people hate on like the mumble stuff because it's yeah. not like you know lyricism or you know whatever in their eyes because it's not like bars. Yeah. But what it is 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 really um, creative delivery. Mm-hmm. Um, I usually get through to people when I make this analogy. Nobody knew what James Brown was fucking saying. Nobody knew what he was saying, but it, the way he was saying it was so cool, and he had he had this energy, and it was called funk, right? Like yeah. he had this energy and this swag, and when he said it, it you, you didn't know what he was saying most of the time, but it just felt good. All the creativity wasn't in what he was saying; it was in how he was saying it. Mm. So, for, to me, Young Thug was the guy who really started, you know, that who really brought yeah. that back to yeah. hip hop, and. And so you're seeing all, all these new, the new young wave is, it's they may not be creative in what they're saying, but in their cadences and their melodies and their delivery, that's where the creativity is. Yeah. So um, it's just a different way to appreciate lyricism. And um, yeah, I like it all. I mean, at, 
as a as a DJ, someone yeah. who has to you know play for for crowds and understand a lot of different types of people and a lot of different types of music, yeah. I don't have the luxury of just being like, oh, I don't like that, I like this. Yeah, I need to understand it all because I need to be able to relate to those fans. I need to be able to I need to understand everything. You know, yeah. um, and to me, to me, understanding music is liking that music. Yeah. Like, if you ask me, do I like that? I would never tell you no. I would just say I don't get it yet. You know what I mean? Because I, because okay. there's in my life there's been music that I thought I didn't like. Yeah. That I eventually understood maybe years later. Yeah. So it's just a matter of putting in the effort to understand. Um, because like the music you grew up on yeah. is always going to be intuitive to you, because you grew up on that, right? Yeah. Skrillex. <laughs> Sure, yeah. that, that's always going to be intuitive to you. Yeah. But when the next wave comes, it's less intuitive, and maybe maybe you don't get it and you just dismiss it, mm -hmm. or maybe you actually put in the work to be like, all right, what do they like about this? Yeah. Like, what is dope about this? Yeah. And when you figure it out, all of a sudden you like that shit too. Yeah. So. Play more Cardi all day. But I was listening to all day. I mean, I, I listen to Astro World too. I, I like I like yeah, yeah. Scott. No, I was listening to Tyler the Creator like all day today as well. Yeah. Super Tyler dope stuff. Too. Um, final question, what, what do the next five years look like for you? Where do you hope to be? Man, the next five years, yeah. I don't really have like a time stamp on, on the shit, but I'm going to definitely ride out Hero Bus and, and, and see how far I can take this sound and, and how big we can grow like this, this movement. Um, I can say I'm definitely gonna start doing more hip hop. Like since I moved back to Atlanta, okay. you know, like all, all the rappers are recording there. Um, and to me, it's mother's milk. Like, you know, I, I started making rap when I was producing. Like I told yeah. you. So yeah. um, I'm not sure if it's something I'm gonna try to do on the side or if it's something that I'm just gonna do um, when I'm done with EDM or whatever. But I mean, right now, it's like I'm, things are just getting bigger and better and like. In EDM, so like, yeah. and I'm not getting tired of it. I still love it. Yeah, so yeah. I can't say that I can like see the finish line. Um, it's just a matter of time. I wish I had time to do both, but yeah. right now e the yeah. EDM shit, the Hero Bus shit, is so popping. Yeah, I yeah. can't. I don't have time to do the rap yeah. stuff. Um, so yeah, I mean, I would say if, if Hero Bus just keeps on going, I'm happy with that. Like, let's let's fucking ride. Um, but if I if I like, I don't know. A lot of it's just creative too, what I want to make. Yeah. I guess that's not really an answer at all. It's dope. No, 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 <laughs> that's actually, some some of the artists I've asked, they're like, why would you even bring up that question? I don't even know what I'm doing tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, no, that's definitely like a sick answer. Yeah, I mean like, I, I didn't- I say this, creatively, I'm going to make whatever I want to make yeah. whenever, whenever that inspiration happens, like, you know, that's going to happen for the next five years for sure. Yeah. It's a perfect answer, <laughs> yes. I would say. Um, so for people who don't know your music and want to check you out, where yeah. can they find you? Um, it's Hero Bust, it's spelled H-E-R-O-B-U-S-T. I'm on Spotify, Apple Music, SoundCloud, Twitter. I'm on everything, you got the internet. You know how <laughs> Absolutely everything. Work. Are you on WeChat? Um, I am on WeChat. <laughs> what? Really? Yeah, absolutely. I'm on WeChat, Weibo, all, all the Chinese ones, man. I, I, I love playing out there, man. It's great. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, if you're not familiar, it's somewhere between hip-hop, trap, and then like dubstep. Um, so yeah, check it out. Sweet. Awesome. We got a DJ from Germany that saw you on Instagram just now. He wants to do a selfie. Oh. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, of course, man. He's like, saw it on Instagram. He's playing tomorrow. And he's like, I'm a huge That's fan. funny, man. We'll film it. It'll be funny to do that. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, what's good, man? What's your name? What's up, Mo? Nice I'm, to meet I'm you. I'm Hayden. Good to I'm meet you, man. Fan, man. Awesome. Great song. Love awesome. It. Appreciate it. you. Appreciate you. You're you gonna play there. Yeah, tomorrow. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah, man. Can, can we do just a picture? That's so funny. Yeah, <laughs>
That's good. Thanks, man. Yeah, man. Maybe are, we... are you playing here? Uh, no, I'm uh, gonna play tomorrow uh, and on Saturday on the Motion Ocean Festival. Okay. Which is, like awesome. down in uh, Kelowna, I guess. Okay. Like, uh, four hours Kelowna is beautiful, man. Kelowna. It's beautiful. It's like my first time here ever. So awesome. We'll see what's happening. Awesome. Hell yeah. Good to meet you, man. Keep keep up the good sound, man. Thank you. Thank you, man. That's crazy. Sweet. Uh, yeah, I'll just I'll just do the outro on that camera. This is still it's rec still recording audio, so you can sync it to that. Camera. Okay. Do your intro and outro of both, then you want, then you can have the audio from this. Yeah, I, I already did the uh, intro. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, share, do everything. Check <laughs> check check Hero Bus out on WeChat and. Do uh, it. Yeah, stay tuned for more videos. Great. Awesome. I just got a